All right, this is third grade module five, lesson one. And in this lesson, we're going to start talking about fractions, but in particular, we're going to be talking about unit fractions where um, we're going to be cutting a hole into some equal parts and then we're going to identify the fraction. Now, parents and teachers, a unit fraction means the numerator is always going to be a one in this lesson. For example, if we're talking about the unit fraction one-fourth, um, the four is going to be, of course it's the denominator, but it's the number of parts of equal parts the whole has been cut into. All right, so that's what the denominator is. It's the number of equal parts that the whole has been cut into. And then the numerator is the number of, oh, let's call it highlighted, highlighted parts. Or it's the number of parts we're talking about. Or it's the number of parts that were eaten. Or it's the number of parts that we have left over. Um, so that's the important thing is in unit fractions, first off, the numerator is always 1. And, and then in fractions in general, the denominator always means the number of equal parts the whole has been cut into. Oops, has been. Need to throw in that word been. Has been cut into. All right. So let's get moving on this. So up here we say we, we see the question that says each circle represents one whole pie, all right? And then estimate to show how you would cut the pie into fractional units as indicated below. All right, so we want to first cut this into halves. Um, pretty straightforward. Boom, half, all right? Um, thirds. Now here's the reason I'm showing this is we don't want students to think that they can cut a circle into thirds like this, boom, boom, like that, because that would not be equal parts. Uh, this little thing is smaller than this, so it would not be equal parts. So when you're cutting something into fractions, uh, the idea is we want to identify the equal parts, and in this case, because the number is three, we're going to try and cut it as close as we can into equal parts, so it's going to kind of look like the peace sign there, or the, or the Mercedes-Benz sign or something. And then sixths. Now this always cracks me up, teachers and parents, uh, watching students try and cut a circle into sixths. So here's what I teach them. I always think, I, I try and teach them things like multiplication. So like they know that two times three is six, so what they can do is use that piece of information to say, oh, okay, well, if I first cut this in half, there's my two, and then cut each of these pieces into three, there's my six pieces. All right, so there's two times three. Now, of course, another way to think of it is you could say, well, but multiplication is commutative. So we could take our circle, and we could think of this as 3 times 2, meaning the 3, let's draw our 3, and then the 2 says now cut each of those in half. So there's our six pieces. So that's a, just a trick that you're going to be wanting to teach your third graders on how to cut fractions, uh, a whole, into fractions, particularly big, big denominators like 6 or 8 or 10, all right, is the concept of using their multiplication facts to help them with that. So this question says each rectangle represents one sheet of paper and estimate, and I love the fact that they're always talking about estimate, so don't... You don't need to let your students, uh, give your students rulers to be all perfect and everything. Estimate, and that's good enough. So we're going to estimate to draw lines to show how you would cut the paper into the fractional units indicated below. So we've got sixths and thirds, and just like I just said, uh, let's start with the thirds. Um, now, some students may want to do horizontal lines. Some students may want to do vertical lines. It, 
the beauty of it is they're both correct. So let's just do on this one, let's do horizontal lines. There's our thirds. All right, now sixths. Now remember, sixths is like three times two. So maybe first thing we'll do is draw our thirds and then one, two, three. There's our thirds. And then to get that sixths, we could cut each one of those in half and there's our six pieces. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way you could have done it is your sixths is you could have done, oh, you could have thought of it as two times three. And you could have said, well, first I'm going to cut it in half. And then, that's my two. And then for my three, I'm going to cut each of those into three pieces. One, two, three. One, two, three. And there you go. And we get six pieces. The one thing that parents and teachers, we want you to be careful of is, and I'll, I'll use this as our example here, uh, some, sometimes students, when they're being asked to draw thirds, uh, will accidentally draw fourths instead. So if they're being asked to draw thirds, they might see that number as a three, and then up here in their drawing, they might draw three lines, all right? So notice they, th they saw the number three, so they drew three lines, but that's wrong because that's actually fourths, all right? Because we actually created four equal parts, not three equal parts. So teachers and parents, be aware of this. This is a super, super common mistake. And the last problem for this video, Yuri has a rope 12 meters long. He cuts it into pieces that are 2 meters long. What fraction of the rope is one piece? And it says, of course, draw a picture. So here's our rope, and we're going to call that rope 12 meters. And then if, we're, if each piece is 2 meters long, we can see that 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So that means we're going to have 6 pieces of rope. Now, here's the, just kind of like what I said in the previous slide, 6 pieces of rope. All right, so that means, and now I'm going to think of this as 2 times 3. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half. There's my 2. And then for the three, I'm going to cut each of those into three pieces. One, two, three. One, two, three. And remember, we're talking about the pieces. Um, a lot of kids will count, and they'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they'll say, hey, wait a second. Those are sevenths. We made sevenths. The fraction is sevenths. Well, that's totally wrong. Because when we're talking about fractions, we're talking about these intervals right here. So this counts as one sixth. Right here counts as one sixth. This counts as one sixth. This counts as one sixth. This counts as one sixth. And this counts as one sixth. So we actually have six pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. So parents and teachers, you're going to have to help the students understand that when we're cutting a uh, rope or a line into fractions, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be counting the intervals, not the slices here, not these vertical indicators here. We're going to be counting the slices, uh, the intervals right there. Got it? All right, so that wraps up that question. Oh, by the way, on this one, Another thing you could do to help students is instead of drawing a line, draw a really skinny rope. <laughs> and then to cut it into six equal pieces, that's where you would begin by cutting it into two pieces. And then cut each of those into three pieces. And sometimes students have an easier time with a rectangle rather than with a number line like I did up here. 
And that wraps up Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 1. We're starting to learn about fractions.